Fala aí galera da Ubisoft, eu sou o Patif e hoje eu vou ter a honra de conversar com Justin Swan. O Justin que é da parte do time de desenvolvimento do Rainbow Six Mobile. Sim, manos, Rainbow Six Mobile, Ubisoft aconteceu! Há anos eu falo que era pra acontecer, aconteceu! E se é isso, mano, eu tô muito empolgado, ó. É, a entrevista é toda em inglês, né? Uh, mas é óbvio que o meu inglês tá meio enferrujado, então eu escrevi as minhas perguntinhas, né, em inglês. E pedi pra corrigirem pra mim, pra garantir. Mas mesmo assim, metemos! Mas eu tentei e eu espero que eu tenha feito as perguntas aí que vocês é, estão curiosos. Que eu também tô, eu tô, não vejo a hora de jogar, porque, eu, mano, eu sou o bichão do mobile, viu? É? Sabia não? <risos> Hum, me esperem, me esperem. É isso, fiquem a entrevista com o Justin. Espero que vocês gostem. Tamo junto, não esquece de deixar o seu like e se inscrever em todas as redes aqui da Ubisoft. É nóis, tamo junto e tchau. Uh, but uh, first of all, thank you, man, for your time and this opportunity. I'm I'm a big Siege fan, and I play like since for the launch, and, and I was so excited for mobile games, especially because in Brazil we have like a big community that only plays in mobile. So it's amazing, and I've been talking with my public in the last years about uh, this, and I was pretty sure that at some point this will happen. So <laughs> I'm really happy that we get here. Um, but just just to to play Sim. But the second time I have to control the match. Introduce yourself uh, to the public, and so we can we can start the conversation. Okay, please explain your role in this project. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Justin Swan. I'm the creative director here in Ubisoft Montreal, and I'm kind of uh, I guess you could say leading the team. I was the first to start on the project and build a team around our idea, and yeah, just really helping guide the vision and try to create something just really great that'll make uh, all players happy, whether you're a Siege player or whether you're someone new to this kind of gameplay. Já olhou para alguém e pensou, o que passa na cabeça dela? And I gotta say, uh, we're really excited about Brazil. It's one of the major regions, regions that we're always talking about. Uh, it's one of the reasons we've made a lot of development decisions even based on that around like uh, getting as broad of device support as possible, these kinds of things. So yeah, I'm really, really happy to be talking to you. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to hear about that because we, we really have like a, a huge amount of people with different uh, uh, buy power, you know, and, and money, and, and they have like some simple phones, and, and they are really excited to play it. Like, I play it for years now, and every time most of my public watch it from a mobile, and they always talk like how much they want to play uh, Rainbow Six. And, and it's amazing to see that something like this is coming to them. Uh, and I have to ask, how long you guys are, are developing this game? Yeah, it's been over three years, I mean, getting close to three and a half years, I guess, that we've been, uh, been working on it, and uh, it's become a pretty substantial team, a lot of really amazing people are on the project all over the globe we've got many different co-development studios as well um but yeah about three and a half years oh that's awesome and that, how can you guys keep the secret for so long <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of surprised myself actually <laughs> um i think everyone's so like passionate about what we're doing that they've been very careful about about it getting leaked or anything like that so yeah it's uh it's really exciting we're, we're just so excited now that we're actually getting to talk to people about the game that's going to be announced soon and that uh we can actually start telling our friends about it and start kind of, you know, bragging about it. And we've got t-shirts coming with the dev, dev team of Rainbow Six Mobile and all these things. So uh, we're, we're pretty excited right now. It's a big week for us. Yeah, and, and, and I totally understand that. Uh, it's, it's awesome to hear. And you said like a lot of people around the globe is is is, is, is working on this project. Uh, do you have like Siege people in this, in this project too? You know, I actually think Our team is in the same building as the Siege team, uh, on the same floor, some, some of us as well. We're always talking with them and learning from them. Um, we meet a lot with like their level designers, uh, weapon designers, and, and also we can look at like their data and find out what their community believes in and stuff like this. But we actually are entirely own team um, that we've kind of built very specifically to make a big AAA mobile game. So we do have some like, uh, you know, console PC developers on the project, especially when we talk about uh, like render technology and graphic programmers and stuff like this, because we really, wanted and have created a very high-end AAA graphic kind of game. Um, but then we also have a lot of people who are very uh, well-versed in mobile development, mobile design, uh, live operations and things like this. So it's we're our own unique team, uh, but we sit right next to and, and talk with the Siege guys all the time. I miss this. <laughs> I worked uh, eight years on, alone, so it, it would probably be awesome to talk about people. And this, this, this yeah. is amazing. I like it, yes. And I see, it, I understand that these things come to the project and it's good for us. You know, it's, it's the conversation that you guys have. I know that it 
games through the game. But let's talk about the game itself because I'm really curious about that. Yeah. It's time! There are main differences between you can like you can you can say to us about uh, the siege game and the mobile game, especially uh, thinking about. Uh, if Siege players will have like some special reasons to play the mobile games also and or if they, if they are about the same experience. There's a few things for me when I first started on the project, I started meeting with the Siege players like a ton and figuring out their thought process and everything. And those guys know what they're doing. <laughs> they're very, very smart and they built something pretty special. So it became clear right away that there's a magical recipe that we don't want to mess up here. So in that regard, as far as like gameplay goes, you're going to see the same operators with those same abilities. Uh, the maps, the, the two maps we have coming out now are bank and border. Uh, those layouts are almost exactly the same. We've simplified and streamlined the level in, levels in some places to make traversal a bit easier. Uh, we removed ladders, for example. We've removed some like whenever you have really fine banisters going upstairs. We didn't want people to have to be pixel hunting with their phones. So we kind of like spread out those banisters, just little things like this. Uh, what's cool though is if you're a siege player and let's say you're playing on the bus, on your way home from work and you have a couple matches in bank and you discover a new access path to get to CEO office, that's information and knowledge you can now take with you and later that night you might be playing Siege at your PC and now you're actually a better Siege player and you're actually mentally knowing how to do some new things which is pretty cool I think. Um, as far as the biggest differences though, you know, we are making it for a different platform that people play differently. Uh, it's not like when you play Siege and you sit down and you're going to put a good 45 minutes, two hours into playing the game and really getting into it. People often talk about it like it's uh, going for a workout at the gym kind of. Uh, we've put a lot of time into how can we actually get a 10 minute session? How can we have you have a meaningful real Siege gameplay in about 10 minutes? And so that involves a lot of things. It's around load times, it's around matchmaking times, how long and what the experience is in pre-match flow and post-match flow. Uh, and also even getting into the nitty gritty, like when you go into gameplay, you kind of like sped up and like optimize, like how fast can you reinforce a wall, all the different animations in the game and stuff to be able to shorten that round length while still keeping all of the like, you know, that complex, you know, the attack slowly breaking down the, de the defenses of the defense team and getting in there. So you still have to have the length for all those things to play out. Uh, one thing I'm really addicted to right now is we've, we're introducing a one round um, game mode where you're randomly going to be either on attack or defend. And that's great because you can get in and in six minutes, you just had a pretty nice siege experience. Now the downside is you don't get to like understand the team and then have the opposing team and then have a counter attack. And those are the nice things you get in the best of three, best of five, which we also have. But it's really cool to get to get a quick six minute session in and get some of that siege gameplay going. So I think those are some of the, the biggest differences. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I love like uh, the mobile part, especially because it's uh, what you say, like timing. Sometimes I don't have like two, three hours to play. I just want to play a quick yeah. match some, in between something. And, and it's awesome to, to hear that. It's it's something that I look for for mobile games, especially. Siege is very strong about teamwork. So we usually have a headset. I played on PC all my life, Siege. So uh, I, we always do have headsets. We have like the keyboard to, to send quick messages. And how do you guys think like uh, teamwork will, will, will be present on Rainbow Six Mobile? Yeah, of course, super important. It's like the key to Siege and being good at it. Um, first off, of course, we will have some support for voice uh, if you want to have a headset in or anything like that. This comes down to then uh, kind of talking about audio a little bit. I think we always need to discuss the kind of whenever we're talking about Rainbow Six uh, Mobile because audio is hugely important in Siege. And you talk to some of the pros and interview some of the pros, some of them will say audio is the most important thing in the game. The thing is though, we know that on mobile, people often play muted. Like the majority of people are playing without sound on. So we had to put a lot of time into this. So that might mean what we do about not having voice. So we've worked on a pretty in, uh, innovative ping system to be able to tell players what to do and where to go or where to look, where to watch out, things like this. And also around audio visualization, where we've actually prototyped during the development of I think, 11 different audio visualizers. So that's things like maybe around your weapon reticle, seeing little ping dots showing up that, that maybe there's a bullet sound over there, or maybe someone walked through barbed wire over there to give you an idea of the audio space going on. Um, but we did all these different versions. There's one that's like a compass at the top. We've tried on the edges of the screen. Uh, and we actually submitted all those to many tests and measured people's performance with these different methods of audio visualization. We ended up going with the compass as the default and it's, it's really cool and really helpful. But still, the game has fantastic audio if you want to put your headset on and have that surround sound. Uh, we do audio propagation just like you see in Siege. So you'll have sound coming through the door down the hallway. But then if you blow a hole in the wall in front of you, sound will come through that wall if it's happening in the room on the other side. So yeah, we um, yeah we did a lot of different things to really try to keep the game true and, and on mobile and, and also 
paying attention to how do people play on mobile. Yeah, it's part for us to, to hear about that, you know, because uh, all, all this time we always talk about the importance of the sound and the, the differences in the game. So it's it's really cool that uh, we hear that from you, that you guys are really concerning about that, uh, about these, these things that make makes it so unique, you know? Uh, I always talk, yeah. talk to my public, there is no other a shooter game like Rainbow Six Siege. They have like a lot of mechanics that uh, after we play Siege, we look for these mechanics in all other games and, and they are like really different. And if you like, you can give like just for a beginning, uh, like a, a, a tip for the players that, that come soon to play and like, like in a strategy or something like this, if we could talk to them now, uh, what you would be advise them? Yeah, I would think if if you're coming well, if you're coming from Siege or if you're not, we've got some pretty cool gameplay innovation in the game, and I think that's the stuff I would really make sure to use, especially if you're not, uh, for example, super comfortable yet with shooting, playing shooters on mobile. We've we created a feature we call it tactical focus, and what it basically is is you press and hold on the aim down scope, the ADS button, and as you hold it for a couple seconds, kind of the world kind of dims around you, like it actually darkens on the edges, your movement slows down, your sound actually dims, and this might sound like some disadvantages. It is you actually paying a cost for this in a way but then if someone passes past your reticle you'll take the shot and you'll get them um so it's kind of this auto fire but you have to activate it and actually you know sacrifice it so it really enforces like holding that line of sight having the right strategy to know this is probably where the enemy's coming locking in tack focus and then getting the shots Damn! so that's a really cool thing uh that keep in mind but that's a capability that you have um, also, we have a couple different ways that you can lean, which is such an important part of Siege is get, you know, leaning around those corners and getting that peak. Uh, so, you, of course, we have more of a predictable two buttons that you can tap that lets you lean. We also have a really cool thing we call the lean slider, which is like a little slider, which you press your thumb, you go aim down scope, and then you can do like this to start leaning back and forth. So, I'd say like really explore the different accessibility features that we put in the game. Uh, they'll give you a lot of advantage. I'm really excited about the, this focus one. It's, it seems amazing, really. <laughs> and since you talk like you guys are, are looking for the Brazilian community, uh, and we are really grateful for that. <laughs> but how are you guys like, uh, how, uh, are the announcements for Brazil, how, like, uh, are we receiving these on, on day one? At this point, I don't know right now, <laughs> but uh, what are your plans and, and initiatives to the Brazilian community? And of course, Brazil uh, certainly included in our worldwide release, uh, as well as all other regions. Um, as far as our testing plan, we still are determining which regions we're going to go into there. That's a that's a complicated topic that we're still working through. Um, but you know, Brazil is really important to us, so we'll we'll try to get there as soon as we can. Oh, that's awesome. In sports, for you know, especially in mobile, we always receive like later than everyone, and this makes us so mad. <laughs> and Rainbow Six is a special game for us. So, Justin, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm really looking forward for Rainbow Six Mobile. And if you have like an, an last message for people in Brazil, it will be an honor. And, and again, thank you, man. The last thing I would say is, you know, first I gotta say for the team, everyone's just super excited and have put so much passion and heart into making this game, and we just can't wait for to get into players' hands. Uh, if you want to play it early, go to uh, Rainbow Six, the number six, mobile.com, and there you can register pre, uh, for like a kind of a pre -ver early version of the game. Um, everyone won't be able to get in at once, but it will at least give you the chance to be able to play the game early. That's awesome. Thank you, Justin. Really, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Então foi isso, espero que tenham gostado. Mandem aí nos comentários o que vocês acharam. Mano, está chegando. Vai ter já o link aí para você poder se cadastrar para ser um dos primeiros a jogar Rainbow Six Mobile. Então não dá mole, se inscreve. Eu já estou me inscrevendo agora também porque eu quero jogar, velho. Vai ser muito legal. A Ubisoft, vamos, velho. É isso, tamo junto. Um beijo, até a próxima. Siga a Ubisoft nas redes sociais. E eu também, pode me seguir também. Ativo. É nóis, tamo junto. Um beijo e tchau.